I'm Jordan Belfort, and this is Sales School. Topic is a big one. It's looping. And the reason I'm going through looping today is because I'm putting the finishing touches on the looping module for the certification course. I'm going back to like for the fourth time now. I'm kind of filling in little blanks. And you know, one of the things that that I, I explain there is that, and you may have heard me say this, but I really go into it very deeply here in a, in a, in a, in a way that's really applicable to anyone, is that when you ask for the order for the first time, just remember, there's only three things that a prospect can say. They could say yes, as in, yeah, let's go, let's do it, which case you have a lay down sale, right? One of those perfect lay downs where basically they were pre-sold before they entered the encounter. So they entered at a very high level of certainty. You said a couple of things that said, yep, this is what I want, it's what I need, and boom, they bought. Those people have a very low action threshold and they entered at a high level of certainty. So your initial presentation was enough. No objections, bam. Kind of rare though. And depending on what you're selling, you know, in some cases, yeah, if you're selling iPhones or some sort of, you know, commodity based, I'm it's so well known and you're almost more of an order taker. Yeah, you can have those pretty frequently, but for people in influence based sales, we have to close. They're very far and few between. Most people hit you with some objection, right? So the second group, you have yes, yeah, lay down. Number two, they say no, not interested. That's even rarer than your lay downs. Why is that? Because you've already filtered these people out during the intelligence gathering phase. And this is important. In other words, you don't want to be making full-blown presentations to people who don't need your product, want your product, can benefit your product, can afford your product, right? So how'd you find out during intelligence gathering? You took the buyers in power, buyers in heat, you moved them forward during your transition, made presentations to those people, and you left the look you lose and the mistakes behind. Basic stuff, right? Now, think about the logic here. So now you have these, these buyers in heat, buyers in power, moving down the straight line. They've already answered all your intelligence gathering questions in a way that said they need the proc, they want the proc, they can afford it. That's why they're buyers in heat or powers, or else they wouldn't be, right? That's how they got categorized. And now you make them this beautiful, airtight, logical case, and you ask for the order for the first, what do they say? No, I changed my, they don't say no. They'll say, oh, wow, it sounds pretty good. Let me think about it. And that takes you to the third thing they could say, which is maybe. In other words, maybe is a catch-all for all of the common objections. It means maybe I'll buy, maybe I won't. That's what let me think about it means. Maybe I'll buy, maybe I won't buy. Bad time, yeah, maybe I'll buy. In other words, that's what those objections represent. Maybe. Yes, a lay down, very rare. No, almost never happens at this point. You get your nose while you're cold calling, while you're doing your marketing, while you're sifting through leads, you're not interested in, they never belong in the pipeline in the first place. The ones that you present to should have already been filtered out enough that they don't say no or not interested. They say, sounds good, let me call you back. Sounds good, let me speak to someone else. You get it? So you don't get no's. Sometimes you get yeses, rare, very rare in most industries. What you get tons of, of only is maybe. Maybe I'll buy, maybe I won't, which is the catch-all for all your common objections. And the reason it's important for you to understand this is because your attitude in here, what you're feeling inside, you're like, oh, Oh, another, oh no, he wants to think about it. Oh, any penny, the sky's falling. I went through this whole presentation and I got another objection. I'm exaggerating a bit, but the point is you have to be ready for that first objection, expecting it and saying to yourself, now is the time I'm going to roll up my sleeves and earn my paycheck. That's what a real salesman does. And that's where his mindset is. So you're not put off by that first objection. You eat that first objection for breakfast because now you know you can roll up your sleeves and really do your job, which is to take people who are sitting on the fence and turn them into yeses. That's what a real salesperson does. We don't take the no's and turn them into yeses. We take the, let me think about it. Let me call your backs. Bad time of years. Let me talk to my wife. Just turn those people into yeses. And we're ready and we, are, we feel strong when we get hit with that first objection because we're expecting it. That's the distinction, all right? I love you all. It's a big tip for the weekend going in. Remember, you get stronger with the first objections because that's where the sale truly begins. Yes, from the first word out of my mouth, yes, I'm closing. But the real influence begins when they hit you with the first objection. Talk again on Monday.